Okay, here we are going to look at the Igloo Home padlock that Bosnian Bill reviewed. Here I have one here. We're going to actually mechanically take it apart and see how good it is. Just to show that it's working, I can enter the key codes. Default settings 7890, press unlock, opens right up. Also, I got my phone app here going. Hmm, I don't know what makes it beeping now. That's kind of strange. Let's see. Igloo home. Oh, unlock. Okay, there we go. Alright. So let's take it apart. So I'm sitting here on an anti static mat because I, there's electronic components inside. Oh, should I put on my anesthetic wristband? Let's, uh, now we have to open the lock. In order to uh, take off the back cover here, I got their little tool that comes with it. Okay, once you get that loose, then you can take off the battery cover, pull out the battery, and there's there's four little screws down inside here. We're going to take those out and take it apart. Now, I've already started some disassembly here. This little part, this is the, uh, the shackle lock. You can take the shackle out. Don't need that part. If you look inside here, there's four little screws. This is the first one that came out. They actually have a... Uh, like a triangular head on them but uh, I found a little tiny screwdriver that would actually work so if we take these four screws out here I mean it's just a flat really tiny flat blade screwdriver but I can get it to work in there not a big deal it was kind of a pain to find one that would work I don't have the triangular bit anyway I've got the screws out you can see the little screws here turn it over and look now oh this comes off so this is you can see the four holes here where the uh, screws there would hold this cover on and we have the uh, push button assembly here now if I take the push button assembly off just a little little pad here you can see we have the dome switches that actually operate it and look there's two screws here these are uh, hold this circuit board on so I got my little screwdriver to fit in here take these screws out Oop. And then, well, here is the circuit board. And there's another part in here. We got this base of the lock. Um, circuit board. I think this is a little beeper here. There's some chips here. I want you to notice over here, there's a little lever here. We'll explore that a little later. Let me take this other cover off. I think there's uh, several screws in here. There's uh, ones down here, three screws. So let me get those loose. Oh, I'm going to put my wrist strap back on. Handle this thing. So we got these other screws out. They're little tiny screws here. Little tiny screws. And I see that there's two more screws right in here. So I have to loosen those up. Take those out. Yep. Not quite. We got that one loose. We'll take this one loose. Put those over there, out of the way. And I think this plate comes loose. As I remember, I had this apart before. Okay. Now you can see the internals. Here's a motor over here. This is the back of the uh, battery pack. This is the locking mechanism, which is very interesting. The circuit board. 
and here's the back plate. Let me set this down. I want you to notice something here. See this little arm here? Can we see that? When that's in there, and the shackle goes down, I'll try to demonstrate here. Put the shackle in. Well, I can't lock it at the moment because the locking mechanism's in there. Let's take out the locking mechanism. This is interesting. The motor's falling out. Well, let's just take the whole thing out in just a moment. I, for I forgot. If I take one more screw out here, this screw... Yeah, it's... Uh, one of those crazy uh, triple uh, triangular screws which is a real pain so I have to put in a different bit see if I can get it loose there we go it's not the right screwdriver but it works we can take that out and dump it out over there And then, this is the uh, the jumper assembly that you would put in the batteries. Now furthermore, we can actually got two screws that hold this, this uh, back of this battery pack assembly. Or what holds the battery in. They're really tiny and way down in there. There's one here. Take that out. Dump the little screw out, and there's one over here. Okay, let's see if we can get that loose. Am I making any progress? It's hard to tell. I think so. Okay, we got that screw loose. And here comes the battery pack assembly. This is what holds the battery pack. And since I took this screw out for the, uh, that holds in the jumper terminals, I think it has, an, has a, this is the little strap that holds the battery in, or that allows you to remove the battery. And now as I remember, this thing slips right out as well. So I've taken that screw out. Whoops. I actually pushed it out. <laughs> now we have the whole the whole bloody assembly. Here's the motor. Got the circuit board here. We got the battery pack. We got the emergency jumper. <coughs> so here's the lock body. Shackle goes in here. Uh, it goes on this side. What I actually wanted to show you, see this little notch down in here? When the, uh, this plate is on here. It actually pushes this little flapper thing up. See this little, I don't know if we can see that. But that actually, when that flapper goes up, on the circuit board here, have to orient myself so it comes through and it's detected by these two little uh, things here it sits in between there and that tells it that the lock is locked and somehow it tells the circuitry to go ahead and lock run the motor to lock the lock sorry I didn't get that very clear so here we go the motor moves this piece back and forth this is the locking assembly. So if we take the shackle here, drop it in there, and this motor goes over that way, then this will not come unlocked. But when the motor slides this over, then this comes out. The shackle will come out. 
so let's take a look at this uh, locking assembly here. This is the little locking assembly. <coughs> so I pull this part out, which usually comes right out. These are the locking poles here. And these push in and allows this locks either side of the shackle. But if this part is in there, then these cannot push in. This is a very ingenious little mechanism here. I don't know if I'm showing it very well. It does come out. So what does the motor do? The motor, look at the motor, has this little arm on it that goes over and energizes the locking. It pulls on that little bracket there. Sits in this little slot. And it rotates and pulls this in or out. And, the, and it has the motor has a little gearbox inside here. It takes quite a few revolutions to uh, rotate this from about 90 degrees. We'll be looking at that. So what I wanted to show here is this is where the shackle goes. This little pocket here is where the motor goes. And this slides along through here. What pulls the shackle back? So. Perhaps um, I can talk lock picking lawyer to try to do some magnetic modifications, magne magnetic spinning or whatever to try to spin the armature. So this is right, right in this pocket is where the, the motor sits, right in here like this. Uh, get it in there. Sits in there like that. So I wanted to look at this, give me a little pointer actually, this is an LED up here, this is a light emitting diode and they have little little LEDs here that illuminate the keyboard and keypad when you press the dome switches. So that's pretty cool, very well made, all the solder points on here, so that's just a big LED up there, oh, I'm not of focus here on the back side here's the circuit board we're gonna go in and take some close-ups of this because I think it's out of focus I mean this this part here I think is the beeper the beeps we got some circuitry in here I'm not the circuitry expert but we'll take some close-ups of this stuff for you guys okay I made a mistake earlier I wanted to show you I pushed this down in this little uh, flapper comes up see this little item here it goes up and down well when the circuit board is on there like this um, it actually sits this way so what it hits that flapper is this little switch here this little S1 this is a tiny little switch I can push it with my finger very gently. S1 there. Boy, that didn't focus very well. So anyway, I said it was this other part over here, but it's it's S1, that little switch. So when the shackle is all the way down, it tells the circuit board to uh, turn on the motor in the opposite direction and lock the lock. So a couple other things I wanted to point out is, you know, this is the, the, the locks the lock. When this motor drives this over this way, then it can come open. You can see these little little doodads coming in, and you push it in. You know it comes in and out. But this, uh, boy, you're not going to defeat that. I mean, this is a pretty solid body lock. I mean, what has to be done is this has to be moved out. So I suppose you could drill a hole through the side of the lock catch on to that somehow or try to drill a hole in it and spin the motor but other than destructive I don't see a good way to defeat this lock other than destructive so <clears throat> that's what I wanted to point out there I mean it's a pretty solid body it's not you know I don't know what this material is if it's zinc cast it's pretty uh, substantial zinc 
So I don't, you know, I, I, I think this lock is pretty well made. I don't know how safe and secure the electronics part is talking to over through Bluetooth and all that stuff. That's not my department. I'm looking at the mechanical parts of this lock and I think it's quite secure. So I would approve it mechanically. So here we're looking at the little motor assembly. I mean you can't you cannot just turn this. It's really stiff. I mean I've taken this little black gearbox apart and it's just a real nightmare inside. It's got an actual little planetary gear system. There's a small pinion on the motor that drives three sets of of a pinion gears that go into a ring gear that turns this actuator so it takes quite a few revolutions of the motor to, to rotate this thing 90 degrees so you can't just force this there's no way to force it I mean the motor is solid this way so you know if you drilled into the side of it maybe you could put a little prong in there and keep trying to rotate the armature and stuff but it, you ain't if you even were to pull on the side of the lock and drill into this, you're not going to turn this piece. So somehow you have to get the motor to spin. So you may have noticed in the last shot I broke the, the lead off the motor. What I got here is a little, little a one and a half volt battery I've just taped up with some wire. Yeah. Alligator clipped a little jerry rig thing on here. We're going to try to make this motor run. What a pain. I had it going here in a minute ago. Okay, I've jerry rigged it again. Here we go. There you can see the motor running with one and a half volts. See that going? Oh man, I'm out of camera. So that's what we have to spin the armature. This is one and a half volts, so it's you know, the battery that runs this lock is 3 volts so obviously if I reverse the polarity it's going to go the other way so you can see that spinning the armature is going to take quite a few revolutions of the armature to move the lock pad now I got to remember where I had it okay I've got the soldering iron and I re-soldered the motor and there it is Try to reassemble this baby. Uh oh, it's broken. So if you can believe it, I reassembled the padlock. I mean, I didn't cheat. This is not a beginning video. This is afterwards. I had to solder the motor connection and all that crap. And I broke another wire, I had to solder that. Let's try it with the cell phone and see if the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth thing still works. Let's see here, we gotta look for some apps. Igloo Home. Oh, and I gotta turn on the Bluetooth. This is irritating. And I have to turn on location. Which is really irritating. It's like a spy phone. So, done. Let's try this again. Wow. It still works. So, Ken's padlock is open. Ken's padlock is now closed. There we go. Oh, okay. Still works, so thanks for watching. I think it's, uh, I've proven that it's mechanically a pretty good lock and uh, robustness. It withstand my resoldering wires and meddling with screws and all this stuff. So I give it an approval. Thanks for watching.